An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. The genuine expression. So critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your common building style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you. To be to the fullest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. And today, I'd like to kind of monologue a bit, well, obviously by default of having no one else, you know, conversing with me at the moment, it's kind of a monologue by default, um, I like to kind of monologue with the, uh, the topic of, is taxation legitimate? Seems to be a very controversial topic, especially these days, and I would like to attempt to add a bit of sanity to the topic. Now, a few disclaimers about this first. When I use certain words and terminology, I'm going to do my best to make sure to clearly define each one and define the context that I'm using. Because, as we all know, with words, dictionaries exist because for every word there's all these, you know, different contexts in which the words can be used, and thus the meaning ends up changing depending on context. It's just one of the perils of language. And then when you also add etymology into the mix, ooh, things get especially tricky. So I want to make sure that I am as clear as possible so that the average person, regardless of, you know, which side of, you know, the discussion they're on, can clearly understand what I'm meaning by what I'm saying. So, here is the first two words that I'm going to define. I have to use these labels to speak about the two basic, well, for lack of a better term, the two basic camps of discussion. You know, they're, they're on opposite sides of, of the fence, obviously. The status, which um, statism is the system that the vast majority of us have been brought up under since little kids, you know, except for a few rare exceptions like, you know, being born in a cave and raised by wolves or, you know, whatever. Um, and then, of course, there are the anarchists. And just to clarify, anarchy does not mean chaos and lawlessness and disorder and all of that. Um, as we can clearly see by looking around at the world, that has actually been the end result of statism. Um, anarchism is simply not a world without rules, but just a world without rulers, in other words, no masters and no slaves. That doesn't mean that there aren't laws governing society. That doesn't mean that there aren't penalties for violation of those laws and so on and so forth. We're not talking about chaos here. We're not talking about everybody going willy-nilly crazy. We're just talking about, you know, no cacistocracy class to where we don't have our kings and queens and demigods that we 
bow down and worship and pay reverence to, and if we don't, we get beaten up and thrown in a cage, and you know, that sort of thing. So, the word anarchy tends to get misunderstood a lot in the, oh, it's, it, it's going to be anarchy, it's going to be chaos, it's going to be pandemony, the world is coming to an end, it's anarchy. No, that's, that's kind of not what it means at all. And, you know, like five to ten minutes of, of research by a 12-year-old will clearly come to the point. You know, all this historical data is public record, it's, you know, not that big of a deal, and, you know, it's, it's not really hard even for the average person to understand it. So, the reason I'm defining these two groups in as detailed of a way as I am is because the way I'm going to touch on certain things within this subject, if I don't clarify everything, there's going to be moments where either group is going to get triggered and go, oh, wait, 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 but Dave, but this, but this, but Dave, but this, but this, that, uh, 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 you know. So I'm trying to, like, cut that off at the pass and ask you guys to kind of hold off on that impulse and instead of having a mindset of, oh, 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 I know it all already, have a mindset of curiosity of, oh, he said that. What exactly does he mean by that? Does he mean what I think I mean, or does he mean something else? Because the answers to that are going to be explained to the best of my ability to explain them and define them and be clear about what I'm meaning. So I'm hoping that this uh, presentation will be as such that it's fully compatible with and relatable to the minds of both camps. Now, when I say this, I'm not trying to appease anybody because, you know, there are some people that just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy. And I understand that there's nothing I can do about that. That is completely beyond my control. So those people are going to be like that no matter what I say, no matter how I say it. And I've just come to terms with that and accepted that as fact and as reality. Okay. And I'm sipping on some pop here and stuff, so don't mind me. Okay, so the big question, is taxation legitimate? In its current form, no. And I'm going to explain why. I'm also going to explain a system of taxation that is not currently in use at all, that actually is legitimate. But before I get into that, I want to explain the illegitimacy of the current system. So, okay, why is the current system of taxation illegitimate? Well, because the current system of taxation is literally robbery at gunpoint. If you don't pay what our cacistocracy ruling elite overlords say you must pay for whatever they say you must pay it, then, you know, go, go ahead and try to not pay that and see what happens. See if you don't end up with fines and penalties and, and you know, guns pointed at your head, you know, thrown in a cage and so on. You know, you, you just you just go ahead and try to try to test that one. You know, you you find out the hard way. That's gonna happen. Now it's understandable that states do need to collect revenue. I mean we we are in a system of money and money pays for things and if you've got no money to pay the people who, you know, build the roads and maintain infrastructure and all that stuff, then, you know, obviously, all of these people that are employed in these, you know, professions, you know, they have bills that they need to pay, they have lives, you know, they need to live, so on and so forth. That's the way economics currently works, and that's a reality, and that's all well and fine and understandable. And there are ways of, you know, paying for things that is not robbery at gunpoint with, you know, under threat and essentially paying the protection money to the mob, as it were. Um, there are ways to go about these things in more calm, more rational, more, more civilized um, methods and attitudes. And 
you know, it's this it's this big huge myth that's out there that people think, oh well, if we don't we don't have people to force other people to pay, then you know who would build the roads and who would maintain the infrastructure and you know who would deliver the food and blah blah etc and this and that and and you know society would just collapse and oh my god we we need all these all these taxes and people to force people to to pay them otherwise society would just implode and technology would disintegrate and there would just be chaos and pandemonium in the streets and we'd go into like mad max beyond the thunderdome sort of world and it would be just total yuck and we can't have that so in order to maintain the safety and continuity of our civilization we need to force taxes on people and have people with guns say you better pay or else and you know property taxes so that if you're running on hard times and not able to pay then they just steal your house and make you homeless and oh well we need this in order to have a safe civil society and no we don't that's that's totally like mob tactics and there's better ways of going about it and if the current system that we were in wasn't so corrupt, there would be a hell of a lot more prosperity, and then people would actually be able to afford to pay for infrastructure and, thing, and things like that, and using methods that are not robbery at gunpoint. <clears throat> um, another thing that you might want to know, uh, if you don't already know, some of you do, some of you don't, and, you know, you can look this up, Income tax. Not only are there no laws on the books whatsoever that state that you must pay income tax, not only does that not exist, but none of the income tax money, not one penny, has ever, ever, ever gone to infrastructure or anything for the people. Um, in the 1800s and before, there was no income tax, and the United States it was it was one of their most it was one of the most prosperous periods, one of the most amazing periods of of wealth and economic prosperity and everything else, and no income tax. And guess what? The roads still got made, and and thing and infrastructure was still maintained, and you know you had. Uh, the Pony Express, and, you know, you had telegraph lines, and you had railroads, and, you know, you had all this different infrastructure that people depended on without so much as one single fucking penny of income tax being collected. That income tax goes straight into the hands of the people who run the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve is, as some of you know and others of you don't, a privately run corporation that has no accountability whatsoever and it's a complete scamola fiat system where they create money out of thin air out of nothing it's not backed by anything most people think that it's backed by gold no it's not it's fractional reserve banking there have been entire books written on the exact painful details of exactly how fractional reserve banking works there's plenty of videos that go over this to where these books are explained and these books are cited and, you know, puts it into a more plain English format and translates that for you. Um, you can look all that good stuff up. But inflation itself is a hidden tax because the government borrows this money that's created out of nothing. Um, not only do they borrow it at an interest debt, but money is literally created as debt. That's why when you withdraw from the ATM, it's called a debt card. They creatively rename it debit, but debit is just the spelling of debt. D-E-B-T. Debt. Yeah, there you go. And government can borrow all the money it wants from the Federal Reserve. And when money is debt and it's created at a debt interest, then you have inflation that just keeps going and going and going like the Energizer Freaking Bunny. So it's a Ponzi scheme, it's a Scamoa, it's a hidden tax. So income tax is basically just protection money to the mob, 
Um, you've got the hidden tax of inflation, and you know, obviously, property tax is completely unconstitutional and illegal. It violates one's right to life, liberty, and happiness, which is supposed to, in theory, be guaranteed under the Constitution. Not really liking that guarantee because it's failed. It's all these things are not guaranteed. Um, even if your house is completely paid off, if you fail to pay your property taxes, they will jack your shit. They don't care if you've been out of work. They don't care about any of that. They will just take your fucking house and make you fucking homeless if you don't pay your protection money to the mob. So, yeah, it's, it's total theft. The current system is complete freaking scamola, Ponzi scheme on so many levels. And you can do the deeper research into all those little finer point semantics if you want. So, once you've come to terms with that, and the anarchists already have, <laughs> most of the statists have not. I don't really deem myself as an anarchist or a statist. I just deem myself as someone looking at the facts and going, oh shit, well, phew, that is what it is, and that kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> you know. I don't label myself in that way. I just look at myself as a human being that's capable of using his own brain, using his own discernment and intuition and abilities to think critically and logically and weigh data and do research and all that good stuff. I just consider myself as a, as a capable, functioning human being with a working brain that I choose to use properly, at least most of the time anyway. Although, I, I guess, depending on who you ask, that one can be subject to debate. Some people think that the stuff I say is really wise and really smart, and other people are like, that Dave guy is crazy. He's totally cuckoo. Someone should shut him up. He should stop spewing his bullshit all over the internet. That guy's just a kook and a nut, blah, blah, whatever. Okay, so depends all on who you ask. But anyway, moving right along. So, the next question is, what would be a system of quote-unquote taxation? And I'm, I'm just using this as like a paradigm word because that word currently, you know, resonates with a lot of people. If I try to use something else, you know, people are going to be like, wait a minute, what are you talking about here? Um, technically, the, the, a more accurate term, as Michael Tellinger has coined it, would be voluntarism, which basically means that in a society where people are actually well educated and well informed and critical thinking is not exit the equation and we're living in a system of complete and total transparency then all of the tools will be there for people to actually make their own informed decisions instead of having selected misleaders do all their thinking for them and whining to these cacistocracy babysitters and just continuing to tell them that, you know, you're perfectly happy with them ruling over you as capricious gods and screwing you over left and right and telling them that you are not willing to stand up and do anything about it and that they have you right where they want you. So, yeah. Voluntarism is, you know, just the idea that living in a society to where all governmental stuff and even i even hate the word government or governmental because govern mental control mind it's like literally the word means mind control i hate the word government that that doesn't mean that i don't think that there shouldn't be a system of infrastructure and rules and consequences and all that i mean a society needs those things those things are mandatory there would be chaos and pandemonium in the streets if there wasn't those things so yes those things are absolutely necessary but i just think that we need rules and infrastructure i don't think that we need mind control being enforced by a top one percent cacistocracy of elite idiots that want us to bow down and worship them as gods i mean you know, go frickin' figure, call me crazy, but I just don't think that's cool. I think that that's slavery, and it's robbery, and we grow up being, you know, we grow up being taught that, oh, slavery and robbery is wrong, you know, unless, of course, government does it on your behalf, then it's all good, it's cool, right? 
we can we can go murder and, and steal and, and enslave as long as it's done by government then hey you know rock on right no that's that's just completely dysfunctional and it's ended up with the world we have where corporations can pay fines and penalties that are nothing more than pocket change every time they do things like rape the environment and destroy the planet and fuck people over they can just continue to do it without impunity because every time they're caught it's like oh naughty naughty you pay a fine now gotta pay a hundred million dollars which you know these big corporations they make that like every minute so it's like they don't care it's like oh burger and fries big fucking deal here you go and then they just keep on keeping on with their shady destructive bullshit so yeah that's what this type of a system has allowed for, where the more money you have and the bigger of a scumbag you are and the more linked in with the system you are, you can pretty much just get away with anything with impunity because obviously the people aren't feeling compelled to rise up and stand together and just say, no, we're not participating in that anymore. We, we really don't feel like continuing to allow you to ruin the environment so we're not going to purchase your shitty products that that are continuing to fund your eco-terrorism um you know no of course not we're not willing to do anything like that we're a bunch of spoiled entitled little fucking brats that like to beg to our babysitter capricious demigod overlords to do something about stuff when they're the ones that are you know continuing to um, commit these acts and, you know, they're just sitting there laughing at us and just like, oh, well, if they're just going to whine like children and let us continue to do what they're doing anyway, we're doing anyway, and, and they're not going to stand up and say no, and they're not going to withdraw our funding, you know, because obviously without funding, they couldn't go and wreck the environment. It takes money to do things. Uh, defund the enemy, and the enemy can't do things like, you know, ecological terrorism or ISIS or any other form of nastiness, right? So, okay. Now that I've gone on that little emphasizing rant about all this, and I've clarified the differences between robbing you at gunpoint to take your money and use it to destroy the world versus a society which encourages full transparency of uh, systems of rules and infrastructure, and, you know, critical thinking and, you know, all that good stuff for, you know, people to have enough wits about them to actually be able to make their own decisions and be responsible, functioning members of society. Now I need to go into the details of what that sort of a functional society might look, at, look like. So what forms of quote-unquote taxation wouldn't be robbery, wouldn't be gun at gunpoint. What are we not doing now and that we've never done that really we could be doing? And obviously there, there are advanced ways of doing these things that would work even better than what I'm about to propose, but people forget that we need to advance in transitional phases. You know, you can't leap the Panama Canal, you gotta go through the locks. And it's not just a simple matter of switching from one thing to another. Just like you can't send a six-year-old to college. That wouldn't work. Um, that six-year-old needs time to grow up and mature and, you know, go, go through the processes of expanding, and, you know, move, eventually moving into adulthood. You can't just toss them into a college class and expect anything productive to come from that. So, similarly, society needs its transitional processes. You know, they need to be weaned off of the addiction to being robbed and move into the idea of voluntarianism or whatever it is you want to call it. And so what I'm about to explain uses some ideas that and terminology and expressions that will resonate more with the status crowd so that they're not, not like automatically having reflexes oh, get that away but at the same time is clear enough that the anarchist crowd isn't going like oh well that's just another version of the same thing we had what the fuck you know so yeah this i'm, I'm ranting and this is taking a, a bit of a long time to explain but i'm i'm doing this just to make sure 
I'm as clear as possible. Okay. So imagine this for a moment. And we're going, we're going to start with one version of this. Imagine the idea of voluntary taxation. In, in, you know, we take the taxation and the voluntarianism, put it together, voluntary taxation. So that almost seems like an oxymoron at first, right? It's like, so what would taxation without robbery look like? What would that look like? For a lot of you, at first, that's going to be like hard to picture. It's like, what would that look like? How would that work? Because, you know, the anarchists are going to be thinking, well, taxation is robbery, so how can you have robbery without robbery? And then you have, you're going to have the status of like, being like, but if no one's forcing people to pay, then, then how's anything going to get paid? All right. So, check this out. Voluntary taxation would obviously, first and foremost, require a system of complete and total transparency. In other words, every penny of, of, of all of it that's, um, that's earned by each state is public record, completely accountable. That, you know, you could go online and log into a system and you could see exactly who and what department is in charge of spending for what, exactly how much was paid, who the vendor was, what it went for. I mean, all these full details that right now, as it is, the state deems as none of our fucking business. And that, of course, allows them to embezzle hardcore. So, you know, these details would be completely freaking transparent. And you would get to see what's going to what. But Dave, that's still taking money from... Shut up, I'm not done. All right. So imagine the first idea of how um, this could be implemented. Um, imagine the idea of like a 10% state sales tax. But Dave, that's still forcing... Shut up, I'm not done. Thank you. Okay. 10% state sales tax but you get to have what i'm going to refer to as a waiver id this waiver id number and i don't mean id isn't like a physical card carrier i mean it's, it's you know it's it's a number like you know like like a login on a website because you know we live in the 21st century we can do shit like that so a login number you create an account all that sort of stuff so it's a waiver id number and what this would allow you to do is, let's say you're going to make a purchase, be it in person or online or whatever, but you're not happy with, with what's, what's being done with that 10% sales tax. You know, maybe there's, there's that street corner that, that's dangerous, it's a dangerous intersection and it really needs a traffic light. And, you know, you've been calling up and complaining and complaining, and they're still not putting that frickin' light in there. It's a really dangerous intersection. And you're like, you know, what the hell, you know, why are they slacking off? Um, or, you know, whatever, whatever else you're not happy with that, you know, you feel they're not doing their job. Maybe you think too much money is going, you know, to one thing and not another, or whatever it is, whatever your grievance is. When you make your purchase, you can put in your waiver ID number, which then lets you not pay that 10% tax. And then in doing so, whether it's um, typing it in online or, you know, physically writing it down or having like a pre-printed like paper that you carry with you or whatever, you can list your reasons for, you know, why you're initiating the waiver and saying, yeah, I'm not paying that in. Your reasons can be clearly stated so that you have a voice. And that documentation would then, you know, go back to the appropriate departments and not only get read by the heads of those departments, but would also be transcribed publicly. So you'd be able to look at 
you know, exactly how many people have issued waivers and exactly the reasons why. And, you know, you'll see their name and their waiver ID number and, you know, even be able to send them private notes on the system and stuff like, oh, hey, I see you have the same grievances as me, you know. So then you can, you know, get together with community members that feel the same as you and talk about the problems and talk about, you know, the solutions and, you know, really, really do, you know, work together to get things done instead of just sitting there bitching. And so then that way you have a voice, whereas right now it's like, oh, if you don't like it, too fucking bad, screw you. That's the current system. If you don't like it, well, too bad. You have to pay it. If you don't like what's being done with it, fuck you, and you don't have a voice. So, so give people a voice. You're saying, all right, I'm not paying this because. And, you know, the first question that comes up is, well, wait a minute, if you can do that, why wouldn't everybody just wave it just for the fuck of it? Why wouldn't people get greedy and cheap and whatever and just... You know, be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just not going to pay. Fuck it. I don't, I don't feel I should pay. Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's easy. Because if we're living in an economy to where most of the people, and hopefully all, but I, I can't, I'm not going to use an absolute because that's ridiculous. But I'll just say most of the people are living prosperously. They're, they're in jobs they like. They're getting paid decent. You know, they're able to save up their money. You know, they're living good so, you know, they can afford it. You know, who wouldn't want to pay money for things that benefit them? Do the roads benefit you? Of course they do. Does all the infrastructure that everybody uses and takes for granted benefit you? Of course. Would you want all of that to go away? Of course not. You want it. You depend on it. You use it. You need it. So, of course, if you're making a decent buck and you really want that infrastructure that you love and depend on to stay there, of course you're not going to freaking mind paying 10 cents on the dollar on your purchases. You're not going to mind at all because that money is going into shit that you want, that you need, that you use, and that's there for you. So that money is being spent on you. So, of course, you spending money on you is not going to be something that you have a problem with. And, of course, if someone is, like, super poor or something, like they're broke and miserable and whatever, then... You know, they can they can use the waiver ID number and write in, yeah, you know, I'm I'm poor and I'm broke and here's my circumstances and I've received no remedy. You know, there's been there's been nothing done to rectify uh, the situation that I'm in and other people that are in my situation, so what little money that I have, I don't see why I should give jack shit worth of any of it to you because you're not helping me, so fuck you. And that would be completely legitimate. You know, and people should have the right to freaking do that. So, with that sort of a system, the people that run these different departments to take care of infrastructure, they're, they're going to be like, whoa, you know, if we don't do our jobs properly, we're going to start getting defunded. There's going to be less and less and less money. And, and we need the money to keep coming in. If, if more and more people stop stop paying it because we're not doing our jobs properly, then, you know, that's, that's going to be a problem. And, you know, the people that run these departments are going to have paychecks and they're going to want to live their lives and they're not going to want to jeopardize their own continuity. Plus, with that level of, of transparency and community interaction, if there is too much of a grievance against the department, and of course with full transparency you get to see exactly who is fucking up and how and why, then that person, rather than the entire department going under and infrastructure collapsing, simple, that person gets fired. <laughs> you know, in this sort of the system, you're the boss. You're paying for a service. And, you know, if you don't like how that service is being rendered, you get to fire the morons. So if too many grievances are, are coming in, then, you know, there would be options on there that, you know, you see all the other people's grievances. Everybody sees that it's too much and that one particular person is responsible. And so you mark it in the system that that person needs to be fired. And, you know, when enough marks go into that system for them to be fired, then they simply are fired. They stop receiving a paycheck, you know, they get the little notice that, uh, you know, they got to clean out their desk and get the fuck out. 
and Human Resources gets the little notice that now there is a new job opening for that position, and the person who was previously in it has been fired for being a fuck-up. So, in that sort of a system, which doesn't currently exist, obviously, but in that sort of a system, then you could have such a thing as voluntary taxation. Because it's not even taxation at that point, really. Because you're choosing to pay when your money is going to where it should be, and opting out on paying when you feel that the money is not being used wisely, and that you actually have a voice and you can take action, and you're not just completely screwed and at gunpoint and robbed and all that, so... You know, but I'm, I'm calling it voluntary taxation so that it doesn't disrupt the statist mind too much. <laughs> It'll just disrupt the anarchist mind a little bit, but hopefully I've clarified enough that that's not quite as painful as it would be. So yes, the idea of giving the people the choice and allowing the people to be educated enough to make informed decisions and allowing for complete system transparency so that the people actually get to choose what their money is being spent on and that if they don't like where their money is going that they're not obligated to pay it they're not obligated to pay for shitty service that they don't like that they feel that their needs are not getting met and that would be a fair system there's no robbery nothing is forced it's not oh whether you like it or not you have to pay this fuck you and if you don't then we're just gonna hold a gun on you and beat you up and throw you in a cage or penalize you or whatever the case may be but fuck you if you don't like it too bad go to the ukraine and cry me a river and whatever you know so that's the current system we live in we live in a fuck you if you don't like it. We are your demigod overlords. You obey us and fuck you. That is the current system. Are you liking it so far? I mean, with all the complaining, I'm seeing everybody doing. I'm, I'm guessing you're probably not liking it so far. I, you know, there's more and more problems that keep rising up and more scandals and, and more bullshit and no remedy increasingly no remedy so i'm i'm guessing that most likely you're one of the people that's looking at this and going i don't like it this is a problem most likely you know unless you're just like one of those select few that's making really good money and living the good life and so you're not really paying attention to what's happening in the rest of the country so you're completely oblivious and you're sitting there like I don't know what you're talking about everything is fine well guess what you are in a select minority group congratulations I'm happy for you I'm glad you're prosperous enough to be oblivious to the, the world around you because you've got the money to spend to lock yourself in that bubble and I'm glad you're happy and I'm glad you're healthy and more power to you but for the rest of us who don't live in fantasy land you know we know that right now things are not good there's problems with constantly more problems people getting laid off all kinds of stuff only the minority of people don't realize that, that this is going on only the minority of people are sitting there like what's everybody complaining about i don't get it so you know i think most of us are basically on the same page regardless of whether you're a statist or an anarchist or what you are or what you believe or what you consider yourself to be i think we're all on the basic same page that you know things are just falling apart more and more and there's just more and more problems and the so-called solutions that keep getting implemented only keep making things worse so i think most of us are on that page i don't think i'm i'm talking anything too crazy for most people to grasp i think most people would be right on track with me i hope so yeah i mean and obviously within this sort of a system of voluntary taxation there would be no property tax and a threat of losing your home there there would be no income tax or any of that but you might still have things like 
taxes on marijuana, you know, in those states like you know, have it legalized, or taxes on cigarettes and alcohol and gasoline and, you know, things like that. And again, when, you know, when purchasing those items, you know, you've got the, the option to, you know, use that waiver ID or not. Like, you know, like, hey, I don't think I should, I should, you know, pay this uh, tax on this, you know, marijuana that I'm buying here because, um, you know, I don't think they're doing a good enough job within the hemp industry. I'm still seeing too many trees cut down. I'm not, I'm not seeing enough hemp paper and, and hemp rope and hemp balsa wood and all these things that could be made out of hemp and hemp biofuels and whatever. I'm, I'm still seeing too much oil being burned. I'm still seeing too many trees getting cut down. I'm not, I'm not satisfied with, um, with the measures so far to, to help protect the environment. So why should I pay this tax on this when this money is supposed to be going to help the hemp industry that's going to help the environment, but I'm not seeing any progress. Why should I pay this? Or, you know, same thing with the tobacco industry. Like, well, wait a minute. You guys are spraying this with all sorts of addictive chemicals and tobacco in and of itself is not nearly as addictive as when you spray like a hundred different heavily addictive toxins on them and all this and that and yeah you're you're poisoning my shit dude i don't i don't like it i i don't see why i should pay you to poison me you know that sort of thing or you know with um you know paying for fuel at the gas pump or whatever it's like wait a minute this money is supposed to be going to help us get more off of fossil fuels and, you know, alternative energy sources and this and that and solar and blah dee da dee da and I don't see enough of that happening and, you know, why why should I, I pay this, this tax if, um, if it's not being put to the use that, um, you know, they're saying it's being put to. So yeah, in a system of full transparency, you can have you can have you know sales taxes and taxes on different products and things like that, and each one is going for all these very specific purposes within a fully transparent system where all members of that system have full freaking accountability, and that if people do not like what's going on, they can withhold their money without being penalized for it, and they can file a grievance and say, hey, I don't like what you're doing with my money. You you're fucking up, buddy. You are not doing your job. And until you start doing your job, fuck you, you know. And then, you know, the people at those departments that read it, you know, they can look into the, the private section of the database where private data such as, you know, your phone number and address and stuff that, like, you don't want the world to have because you don't want tons of crazy stalkers at your door. Um, you know, so they can cross-reference that and look that up, and pay you a visit or give you a call and talk to you about it and be like, you know, look, we're... We're really sorry that stoplight hasn't been put in yet. We've been a little backlogged. Um, it's scheduled to go in on the on the fifteenth of of next month. You know, um, you can look that up online here. There it is. You know, we're sorry we we haven't been able to get that in sooner. We're just really backlogged. But you know, it's it's scheduled to go in that day. Swear to God, it's it's going to go in that day. It's it's getting done. So, you know, then there's, there's interaction, there's back and forth communication, there's, there's actual accountability. The people have a voice and the employees we hire can, you know, respond to us and, 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 you know, we can work with them to rectify things and, you know, suggest ideas to them and be like, hey, well, you know, I'm noticing that you're doing this this way. It might, it might be a more efficient system if you did that this other way instead because, you know, then you're increasing productivity while saving money and et cetera and so on and getting more done and blah -de blah You know, in a system to where it's a two-way conversation, to where the people have a voice and a choice and they're not being robbed by wannabe demigods at gunpoint. So yeah, I think that would be much better. And if you don't think that would be much better, then there is nothing I, I can say that can help you. <laughs> there is nothing. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's all there is to say on this. So, you know, feel free to share, like, comment, you know, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you have um, 
found this to be mentally stimulating. Hopefully it's given you some things to think about and ponder. And for those people that just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy, well, I hope I've given you something to complain about and feel angry about and shake your fist at because, you know, that's what you want. So hopefully I have equally, you know, fulfilled your needs and, and your desires and that you are fully satisfied in your lack of satisfaction. So hopefully I've been able to accommodate that group as well. So everybody take care. Peace out. Thanks for listening. Catch you later.